Well, it's going to be a little bit of work on the uh, face today. Uh, you know your eyes getting better when you mount the camera and you don't have to sit there and spend an hour trying to find a damn hole in the camera for the screw to go into. It just went right in. I mean, that's how good my eyes are getting. And I am so thankful. Anyway, enough about my eyes. Now let's talk about his eyes. This eye is just a hair closer to the nose than that eye. It bothers Todd. It also bothers me. So, get my chair up here. I got my uh, flame going here. Uh, these are. This is a great uh, candle. It doesn't leave soot on your uh, your knife. And if you're cutting clay, you don't want black soot on your knife. Um, this is a hundred hour plus candle. Um, Let's see what it say. En en uh, emergency essentials. Be prepared. Be prepared dot com is where you can uh, order these. These are great. Uh, it's just 100 hours. I mean, how many years can you use something like that if you're just doing it for things like cutting uh, a clay? All right. I may have to use my magnifiers today only because. This is going to be delicate work. So I'll put them on. <laughs> nah, that doesn't help that much. It's going to be a hard thing to do no matter what I do. So I'll just swing it. I do have my napkin for cleaning my eyes or rubbing them they get moist and it's hard to see I took uh, the bill of the hat off and you see how nice that uh, 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 photographic paper does it, it keeps the shape you don't lose the shape and it, it's pretty stiff so it's it's ex it's an, a great way of, of making something thin with clay on it and have it strength strong enough to hold itself so I'm gonna put that back there out of the way now I gotta decide how to do this I gotta cut into the eye and I'm not gonna do much more than this today because I'm taking it in short steps with my eyes they get tired real fast I'm going to I'm going to heat up my blade in the flame. It still gets a little bit of soot on it. It's not soot free, but it's it's nice to have. Okay. Now I'm just going to cut back in there. I'm sorry if you couldn't see that. I I can only do so much with my cameras. I got both cameras going right now. Now I've made a cut right there. And I've gone down past uh, the eye in depth. And I'll make a, another cut. Right just in front of the eye going past the eye. I feel like a surgeon. The thing is to keep that knife nice and hot so that you can cut without hurting the clay. And alright, there we go. the eye and down all right let's see if that will move uh, 
The thing is, if you cut it with a hot knife, the clay melts and it sticks to itself. So it, it takes some patience. And, uh, and I'm going to push the eye out just a hair. About a sixteenth of an inch, maybe an eighth. Now I'll check the space between the eye and the uh, nose. I'm going to go with the center of the nose to the end of the eye. And it's perfect. All right. Didn't do a lot of damage, just, uh, you know, you don't want to screw up what you spent hours working on, so that's why I did what I did. You know, it's just a matter of filling it in. You don't want to have to re-sculpt your eye because you got it right the first time and you don't want to have to screw up what you spent so much time trying to, to get right. Okay, I can blow out my candle now. That's something I couldn't do three months ago because uh, of the Bell's palsy. I'm a, I'm a physical wreck. <laughs> oh, God. Now, i got to fill in this little crevice right here. And I don't want to use a lot of clay. I just want to use a small amount. So I'm taking a real small uh, rolled clay. Just enough to push it in there, being very careful. I love this silicone too, but you can't get them anymore, so I wish I could tell you where to get them, but I can't. You can make your own uh, silicone tool if you do a little search on YouTube, there's a lady that, uh, at least I found a lady that shows you how and the material that you need to do it. I made a silicone tool for a friend of mine in Texas, and uh, I haven't received any complaints about it, so it must have turned out okay. All right, I can see my, if I raise my glasses and use the bifocal part, I can see a little more clearly the eye. Now, I want to take the clay off of it, so uh, unscrew it. So that I can tilt back the head and look underneath there. It's hard to see sometimes because uh, the light isn't perfect. I could do this with a small wire tool, but I, since I got this tool here, why not use it? All right. The eye looks better, and uh, let's put the hat back on together. Got to line it up again. There we go. How about that? Now I just have to wait for him to come by and take a look at it and uh, give a final approval before we take it to the uh, foundry. Now I got something else I'm thinking about trying to do, so be right back. This is what I'm thinking of doing. I uh, 
was I woke up about midnight last night, or actually before five o'clock this morning, with an idea for uh, my next piece, and I'm going to include the horse that I created in that uh, two-disc uh, DVD set, that instructional DVD set that I did on creating a horse um, I, uh, from scratch, and uh, I want to use this horse, but I don't want to leave it by itself because it's 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 so neat. It, it what it is is it's it's like a Mustang. It's it's the build of a Mustang, <coughs> Mustang, which was the type of horse they had out west. Uh, you know, you, you see a lot of western movies where they're riding quarter horses, and, and they're not accurate. There's one movie, Audie Murphy, who is a uh, uh, probably one of the most decorated uh, soldiers in World War II, and in his in the history of this country, other than uh, maybe Sergeant York. I don't know. I don't know if Sergeant York was that decorated. Anyway, uh, he made a movie years ago, and I can't remember the name of it, but he rode in that horse, uh, in that movie, a, uh, a uh, cayuse, which was a type of, uh, uh, or breed of horse that uh, uh, populated the, the West. It was brought over by the Spanish. Uh, in the 1500s and 1600s, and uh, it was uh, it was it, it it was adapted for life out where there's no oats and no grass. I mean, it it it, it could live off of uh, scrub and stuff. And <clears throat> they were a hardy horse; they could go places that uh, a quarter horse can't go up a mountain or whatever, rocks, whatever. And in the movie, he gets away from the sheriff because the horse, the cayuse he's riding, is able to actually climb a rocky uh, uh, cliff all the way up to the top, and they couldn't. They had to go around. So they were an incredible breed. Um, in fact, a lot of the photographs you see of uh, Native Americans uh, uh, on their horses back in the 1800s, uh, they're not on quarter horses. They're on uh, barbs and cayuses and uh, the type of horses that uh, populated the West back then. Okay, I'm going to screw this down to the board so it ain't going to be moving. What I'm thinking of doing is uh, putting a figure next to the horse and I'm thinking I can just use this armature that I got from uh, Sculpture Depot. Um, it looks about the right size for the horse. Uh, yeah, see the, the bottom of the foot would come to just about the bottom of the belly, uh, which uh, this does. But anyway, I'm thinking of having a figure of a cowboy or an Indian standing next to his horse with his arm up and over, over the shoulder of the horse. And I'm thinking an Indian right now because I, in my imaginations in the morning, well, at night, last night, I kept on seeing this uh, figure of an Indian standing next to his horse, maybe with a full headdress, not completely detailed, because uh, tight detail will be hard uh, for this size. But uh, I'd have to change the leg stance. Uh, I'd have to take that leg and bring it down to the ground, uh, because I can't have the horse moving while he's standing next to his horse. Or I could put him on the horse, but I just I kind of like the idea that I had because he'd have his shield on his arm and it would be popping up behind the horse's uh, shoulder here as he's resting against the back of the horse and his arm is st swung over the, the horse. And that shield would make a nice uh, design on this side over here. And uh, it's just an idea I've got. I don't know whether I'm going to do it or not. Um, and, and since I have this armature from Sculpture Depot, this is the, uh, this is under $15 for this, this armature. 
And uh, I don't know what size it is. Let me get my tape measure. This uh, armature is just under 11 inches tall. I got to do some figuring out first before I use this um, because I didn't make this armature and this horse for this size. I don't know if this is going to match uh, proportions uh, of a human to a horse. Uh, the uh, horse's head is three times the length of a human head. And so I go from the top and see that'd be about the size of the head of the uh, the person and that's too small or that's too big. So yeah I don't know if I'm going to be able to use this or not. Anyway if I don't use it I'll uh, make my own armature and I'll show you how to do that but I'm going to do it in an instructional video uh, DVD set and uh, to go along or to companion with the horse so that if you decide that you want to add a figure to the horse you just created using my instructional DVD you'll be able to uh, do that and uh, you can put them on the horse or off the horse like I'm going to do uh, it, it just depends uh, a lot on uh, uh, you know how you end up doing it and I'll show how to change the leg position and all that stuff. Alright, I'm not going to do that today. I think I'll do that uh, probably tomorrow. I'll start. I don't know. I've got a doctor's appointment on Wednesday and I'm not going in for my eye surgery on Wednesday. They don't do that on Wednesday. They, they do the surgeries on uh, Tuesdays. And uh, it's the son of the doctor that I've been seeing who will do the uh, uh, operation on my eye. And so I've got to go in for a consultation. Anyway, all right. I'm blabbering now, and I'll let you guys go, and I'll see you guys next time. Whatever that next time is. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right. See you next time.